Here we go again with another level guide, this time R5B2, the level known for... <sighs> yeah, the spitters. But not only spitters, there's also... Infectious fog. As well as a... Okay, can I go five seconds into this intro without having a spitter cutting me off? Huh? Okay. Thank you. So, as I was saying... Oh, come on! Hello everyone, Professor Scalar here, and welcome to the R5B2 Guide, a level that I would probably consider the most difficult B-tier level in this rundown, purely because of the overload objective. But let's start this thing off as we always do, talking about your loadout. For this level, I would recommend taking a Bio Tracker, a Mind Deployer, a Seafoam Launcher, and an Auto Sentry. I like taking this loadout for a few different reasons. First of all, the Bio Tracker. In this level, you're going to have to deal with an error alarm, as well as quite a few zones are completely covered in infectious fog and have a lot of enemies in them, including scouts. And as you know, any level that has this type of situation in it, I will pretty much always recommend you take a bio tracker. Just having the knowledge of where these enemies are and everything like that is just too important not to have. The mind deployer, you have to deal with a few blood doors. There will be some alarm doors where this can help out quite a bit. Just again, the mine deployer is a pretty good staple in any loadout. As long as you have doors you could barricade and small little areas you could funnel enemies up, I'll pretty much never not recommend this thing. The Seafoam Launcher. This level does have uplink terminals in it if you do the extreme objective. And whenever there's uplink terminals, I like to bring a Seafoam Launcher with me. This level in particular, there's going to be a few terminals that could be in very small rooms that have maybe one or two doors that attach to them. So being able to just keep doors seafoamed over and over again and just keep enemies out until you finish the uplink saves you quite a bit of ammunition and can make things a lot safer for you and your team. The last thing you want are for enemies to bust down a door, come through, and they have to walk two feet and they're already on top of the person who's taking care of the codes. Especially with there being a glitch this rundown where you can accidentally softlock yourself out of a terminal, and if you do that in this type of level, you won't be able to proceed no matter what, so better safe than sorry. And then finally, with the auto sentry, I like taking this because again, as I mentioned earlier, you're going to be in some situations where you're in small rooms and you don't really have a lot of place to maneuver and run around. There's a lot of infectious fog, so you can't really run far away to outmaneuver enemies. So having an auto sentry to just stagger enemies and make it easier for you to kill them without them hitting you is pretty nice. Burst sentry and sniper sentry could work for this level, but I feel like the auto sentry is a little bit better than those two, so I would recommend it more than those. And then finally, when it comes to the loadout, I would recommend that two, maybe if you really want three people on your team, take combat shotguns or regular pump action shotguns. The hardest part in this level to a lot of people is the overload objective, which requires you to go through a lot of infectious fog covered areas. You have an air alarm going on, there's a lot of enemies, potentially multiple scouts. Just many situations where you may have a bunch of enemies coming after you and you can't really run away because somebody has to hold a fog turbine and you're limited because of all the infectious fog around you, even if you do use fog repellers. So having shotguns that could just instantly fire and almost instantly kill any enemies when they get that close to you is going to be very beneficial it'll help your team stay alive a bit longer. If you take things like sniper rifles or hell guns, revolvers, yes those can be helpful, but if you have 20 enemies that are in the same room as you, swarming after you, you're not really going to be able to kill them as easily or effectively as you can with a shotgun or combat shotgun. So Definitely two, maybe even three people take this on your team, and things should be a bit easier. Dropping down into the level, you'll see that your main objective is to collect nine GLP canisters, and there is a total of 13 of them in the level. And these can be found in every single zone throughout the high sector, except for just one of them, but we'll get more into that a little bit later. For now, you're just going to be going throughout zone 79. In here, you will find a few GLP canisters, your first bulkhead key, as well as the bulkhead door control that leads to your high sector. However, you're not going to be putting the bulkhead key into this door control. If you're going for the optional objectives, you have to make sure you do all of overload and all of extreme first before you go here. So for now, leave this be. Just clear out zone 79, kill off all the enemies, collect your resources, and then leave all the doors open. It might sound a little bit weird, but when you finish the extreme objective, an air alarm will initiate. 
So you want to make sure that these doors don't get broken out prematurely as they will be valuable for you a little bit later. So for now, clear all the enemies, and whenever everything is dead, you're going to head to the northwestern corner of zone 79. Here you'll find a security door that leads to zone 82, and this is a blood door. So place a minor two on it, and you should be good. Inside of zone 82, you will find more GLP canisters, more enemies, a bulkhead door control, and the door to your extreme objective, as well as a generator and a security door that leads to zone 83. However, you're not going to worry about that generator or zone 83 security door that's tied to it. You're only going to be focusing on grabbing the GLP canisters and then heading to your extreme objective. The order you have to do this level in to get prisoner efficiency is extreme, then overload, then main. So you're just coming in here basically to gain access to your extreme bulkhead door. Plop your bulkhead key into the door control, finish the scan, and head over to the security door that leads to zone 156, which is just going to be an open bulkhead door. Inside of zone 156, you'll see that your extreme objective is to find two specific terminals and create an uplink at each one of them. Both of these uplink terminals are going to have six codes to them and the very first terminal will be with you inside of zone 156. However, this zone is massive. There's going to be a lot of enemies in here, a lot of the rooms are going to be covered in infectious fog, and there is a total of four terminals throughout the zone, and any one of these four could be your very first uplink terminal. And the fun fact about these terminals is that they can actually spawn in different locations. They'll always be inside the same room, they can't spawn anywhere else, but inside the room there are different locations where it can actually be which for the most part doesn't really change how you plan or prepare for these uplinks. However, there is one location that I'm aware of that can be surrounded by infectious fog. And if you do get this one, you're going to need to make sure you find some fog repellers. That way, the person who's doing the uplinks isn't just getting a ton of infection throughout it. As for the uplink terminals themselves, though, let's go over the possible locations for each of them and how you can prepare. So no matter where your terminal is, you have a good idea of how to do this. If your uplink terminal is one of the two that spawn in room C, this is what your map overlay is going to look like. As you can see, there are two rooms that enemies will spawn in, and I have labeled one of the doors as a door that you should leave open to funnel. If you leave that door open, then every single enemy, I'd say 95% of the time, no matter where they spawn, will funnel to this door right here, making it very easy to defend during this uplink. You can either leave the door close to you open, that way you can just shoot them when they come down the hallway, or you can keep it shut, maybe sea foam it once or twice or even more if you want to just stockpile enemies on and keep them out and then have one or two well-placed mines just decimate most of the enemies when they come through. It's up to you and your team if you want to spend more tool on this uplink or more ammunition. You're given quite a bit of both throughout this level so either way honestly works. Again it's more so up to your team. If your uplink terminal is the one that is in room E then this is what your map overlay is going to look like. This is the terminal that can potentially spawn down in the infectious fog, so if that is the case, make sure you have some fog repellers. Overall, defending during this is not that complicated. Enemies can only spawn out towards the east because every room to the west of you is only one away. And even though there's two different rooms that these enemies can spawn in, they all have to go through this central door right here to get to you. So if you're going to place mines or use sea foam or place any auto sentry, this is the door for you. I would probably just recommend place a mine or two on the door and then just keep it sea foamed until maybe halfway through the uplink. Again, it's up to your team depending on how much ammunition, how much tool you want to use. And finally, if your terminal is the one in room H, this is what your map overlay is going to look like. And as long as all the doors in this area are kept shut, 95% of the time enemies will come for this door right here, no matter which one of the two rooms that they spawn in. They can go for the western door, however I find that they very rarely will go for that, so just make sure your bio tracker is keeping an eye out, but you can focus all of your resources on the eastern door. Once this uplink is finished, you are then going to want to query where your second terminal is, as it could be either in zone 157 or 158, both of which require a keycard to get into. So figure out which one you have to go to, go to the respective security door, find what keycard you need, and then go throughout the zone and find the keycard if you haven't already. Both zone 157 and 158 are just full team scans, so once you have your keycard and you do the scan, you can head on in. Both zone 157 and 158 are very similar to each other in the fact that they both have two uplink terminals, and the way that they're positioned are actually very very similar, so let's go over all four of these terminals and how you prepare for each of them, starting off with zone 157. If your terminal is in room A, this is what your map overlay is going to look like. There is only one entrance to the room that enemies can come through, so this is going to be where you want to focus all of your resources. Again, 
Same thing as before, I honestly don't even need to say this. This is the only entrance to the room, plain and simple. However, if your terminal is in room C, it's sort of the inverse. Enemies are going to spawn in room A and they have to go through that door. There is a room divider between room B and C, so you are not going to be able to actually stand near that door connected to A and keep it seafoamed over and over again. So if that has been your strategy up to this point, I would recommend just placing a mine on it, seafoaming it, and then just using your auto sentry to help defend you further back in room C. Because if you do stand in B, then they can spawn in either A or they can spawn in D behind you right next to the terminal and you really don't want that to happen. However, if your uplink is in zone 158, things are going to be a little bit different, but for the most part, actually very similar to zone 157. If your terminal is in room A, then this is what your map overlay is going to look like. It's pretty much the exact same as zone 157, the only major difference being you have two doors in your room, not just one. However, if you have the terminal that's in room C, it's going to be the inverse. Enemies are going to be spawning in A, they're going to break down one of those two doors, or maybe even both of them, and come to you in room C. Since you can't be there to just keep the door C foamed over and over again, I would recommend just C foam both of the doors, place a mine on each one of them, and then have your auto sentry position down near you back in uh, room C and just hold out there while you're doing the uplink. Once your second uplink terminal is finished, two major things are going to happen. The first one is going to be the security door to zone 85 is now going to automatically open. Remember the one back in zone 79 that had a lockdown on it? Yeah, that disengages, it opens up, and that is going to be where you want to head to next. The other thing that's going to happen is an error alarm is going to initiate, and this error alarm will spawn in three regular strikers and shooters roughly every 50 seconds. When it comes to this error alarm, it's not too big of a deal. I would recommend try to melee kill these enemies as much as you can, try to preserve your ammunition, because there is still quite a bit left to do in the level, and you don't want to be spending all of your ammunition killing off the air alarm enemies. So head back to zone 79, head into 85, and there you will find a fog turbine, a disinfection station, your second bulkhead key, a bulkhead door control, and the door to the overload objective, as well as a lot of resources. So head in there, disinfect, grab the turbine, get the key, and then you can put your bulkhead key into the overload door control as that will be the next objective you're doing, and then head over to the bulkhead door. It will lead you to zone 315, it's just an open bulkhead door, no alarm on it, so you can head in whenever you're ready. So now we're at the overload objective portion of this level, and this is where things are going to get very, very difficult. Your overload objective requires you to collect 5 out of the 7 OSIPs that can be found throughout zone 315, 316, and 317. Zone 315 will always have 2 in it, while 316 and 17, one will have 2 and the other will have 3. So I would recommend before you go too far into here, get on a terminal and figure out which one, zone 316 or 317, which one has three OSIPs in it because that's the one you need to go to and you can completely ignore the other one. As for zone 315 itself, or really just this entire area, there's going to be a lot of enemies, you have the air alarm going on, and these areas are completely covered in infectious fog. So you're going to want to make sure you have that fog turbine with you, and ideally everybody on your team should have a stack of fog repellers. There's a lot of those found throughout zone 315, 16, 17, so if you don't have that many already, don't worry, you will be finding a lot as soon as you open up a few boxes and lockers. As for dealing with zone 315, you can either go together and try to clear out the rooms as a group, or if one person on your team knows the layout of the rooms very well and can maneuver through them even with the infectious fog everywhere, you could just send them in, pull the rooms one by one, just walk in a room, shoot, run away, keep the door open, that way you don't break them down needlessly, and then just go all the way back to 85 and just pull every single room one by one to clear them all out. As far as I'm aware, Zone 315 has no scouts in it, so you don't have to worry about them, but it's up to your team. If nobody's really that familiar with it, then you could maybe just send one or two people down with the fog turbine to pull rooms, or if you really want to, all four of you can move together, and then you just have to be really quick about killing these enemies. This is the reason why I recommend the shotguns, because if you do walk into a room with a lot of enemies and it gets triggered because of the air alarm enemies, you have the capability with shotguns to just kill most of these enemies without taking too much damage. But if things do get a bit uh, sketchy, start throwing fog repellers, because the more you can see and the more place you have to move around and like reposition, the better. But do what you think is best and how your team is best suited. People, you know, adapt to different types of strategies, so just make sure everybody's on the same page. That's the biggest advice I can give to you. But once you all know what you're doing, 
get to work on 315. Pull the rooms if need be, or just start clearing them out. Look throughout it, find your first two OSIPs. You can also find your third and final bulkhead key inside 315. You can then make your way to either zone 316 or 317 security door. Both of these are going to be class 4 alarm doors, so let's look at a map overlay for zone 316 first. The security door to zone 316 is a class 4 alarm, and as you can see, it's pretty straightforward on how you're going to want to handle this. As long as all these doors are kept shut and none of them got broken down by either you or the air alarm enemies, every single enemy that spawns in this alarm will come for this door right here. So I would just say place a mine or two on it and just keep that thing seafoamed. You're in a small room. It's small enough that really two fog repellers being thrown out can just cover pretty much the entire area. So throw your fog repellers, do the alarm door, keep that door seafoamed until you finish every single scan, and then just let the mines deal with most of the enemies and just shoot and kill whatever's left over. Overall, this alarm door shouldn't be too difficult for you as long as that door is preserved. If that big door is broken down, then things will be a little bit more difficult, but I would just suggest place down an auto sentry in the hallway and maybe throw a fog repeller or two down there and then have one or maybe two people on your team who are just in charge of focus firing it and killing any enemies that come from there. If you're going to zone 317 though, this is what your map overlay is going to look like. No enemies are going to be spawning from the south of you as every single room is just one away from you so they can't spawn there. They're only going to spawn th to the north and this door here is really the only valuable one. If this door is kept intact, this alarm is going to be very easy for you. Just shut it, see foam it. I recommend wait for an air alarm wave to come in to you first. That way you kill them and then do the door. That way they don't spawn before the alarm door enemies spawn in. Do the full team scan. Have that door see foam in advance and a mine on it. See foam watcher, keep that door see foamed while everybody else is doing the scans. But once you are done with either one of these two alarm doors, then you can do it one of two ways again. Either you could have all four people move together into the zone and try to find the last three OSIPs you need, or you can have two people go all the way back to zone 85, and then two people go into the next zone. A lot of people like to do the two and two split because it's a bit safer and you're not always guaranteed to have the air alarm enemies spawn on you. There's a chance they can spawn outside the sector completely and the people in 85 can deal with them. Maybe they'll spawn with you in 316 or 317, or maybe they'll spawn in the middle ground area and then some of them will go for both groups, making it a little bit easier because zone 316 and 317 will each have, I believe, two scouts in them. So if you're going in there and the air alarm wave spawns in the room with the scouts, breaks down the door and screams and wakes them up, things can get hairy really, really quickly. So doing a two and two split might be a pretty good idea. If you do a two and two split though, I recommend the bio tracker and the mind deployer be the people who are going ahead into zone 316 or 317. That way, if maybe you see a room with a lot of enemies in it, but there's no scout in it, you can just simply open the door, shoot, shut the door, place a mine on it, and then just fall back to 85, and you'll have plenty of time to get back there before the wave catches up to you. Or if something does go wrong and scouts get set off, and you guys die immediately, then hey, at least people are out in the open at a choke point, aka the bulkhead door, they have sea foam, they have an auto sentry, and they can more easily deal with all the enemies. Then when everything's dead, then they could just go in and quickly pick you up. Don't worry too much about gaining a lot of infection during this portion. There is that disinfectant station in 85, so it's not the biggest deal if you gain a lot. You have infinite disinfect, so don't worry too much. But once you've gone through 316 or 317 and you've collected all five of the OSIPs you need and you have the third ball cat key, you can leave, you're done with the overall objective, and you can head all the way back to zone 79 where the bulkhead door control to your main objective waits for you. With the overload objective completed and you now have access to the high bulkhead door, there's not a whole lot left for you to do. You just need to collect the last few GLPs and you are done with this level. From this point on, I recommend take things a little bit slow. You don't need to really rush anymore. Infectious fog surrounding you is not an issue. Yes, there are quite a few more enemies and the air alarm is still going on, but take it slow, relax, calm down, melee kill these enemies, and just don't do anything irrational or super stupid because you think you have to beat the level within the next two minutes. All that's left are the last few GLPs, which let's start off by going to zone 84 first. This is your high bulkhead door. It is a class three alarm. We want to do this before the blood door to zone 80. That way we minimize spawn locations. So let's look at a map overlay for zone 84 security door. As you can see, two different locations enemies can spawn in. Either they will spawn from the south in the overload sector or they'll spawn to the west. If they spawn to the west, you have two doors that you can shut, seafoam, mine, do whatever you want to do to 
barricade and buy yourself more time, so no big deal. To the south, there's nothing you can shut, so I recommend place your auto sentry down at the security door to zone 85 and face it either towards you or face it towards the overload bulkhead door. That way it shoots enemies when they're coming from that direction and it'll buy you a little bit extra time. Once the alarm door is finished and everything's dead, you can head into zone 84. In there, you'll find more GLPs, enemies, resources, the usual, as well as a power cell that you will need to get into either zone 81 or 83, which will be the final zone you need to go to to collect GLPs. With all that collected though and the power cell in hand, you can head back out to zone 79 and do the blood door to zone 80. There can potentially be a scout on the other side of this blood door, so do be a little bit cautious of that. There's nothing you can really do to prevent it from getting set off, so if you're unlucky and that is a situation, you could try to potentially kill it when the blood door opens since it is a small room, or let it get triggered and then just defend. A few different directions it can come from, but hey, at this point, you should be okay as long as you're all working together and you're not panicking too much. Inside of zone 80, you will find a few more GLPs, not quite enough though, but you will be only about one or two away assuming you've collected them from everywhere else, more enemies, resources, and another generator and security door. You may notice that you have two generators, two security doors that are tied to generators, but only one power cell. And that's because you only have to go to one of these two zones. And no, you do not need to check in advance or anything like that. Zone 81 and 83 will both always have GLPs inside of them, and you can't potentially softlock yourself in this level by going to the quote, incorrect zone. It's really more so about your preference. Both of them are class four alarm doors. I personally like to go to zone 81 just because I find it to be easier to get into and also easier to go throughout, but I'll be explaining both of them. If you're going to zone 81, this is what your map overlay looks like. This security door is pretty easy to handle. Enemies will be going for the north door here, and it's a very easy funnel. It's a long straightaway they have to take to get to you. I recommend just mine the door, see film it, and then place an auto sentry facing towards the ladder that they're going to walk up when they get into your room. As for doing it itself, I would say just have two people defending uh, near that ladder and killing enemies, and two people just doing the scans. You really don't need all four of you doing the scans. You can maybe all work together to get the first two sets, but then after that, have two people or maybe just one, shoot the enemies, keep them at bay, finish them off, and the other people work on the scans. Once it's finished, you can head to zone 81, get the last few GLPs, and then leave. However, if you're going to zone 83, things are going to be a little bit different. First of all, let's look at a map overlay for the alarm door itself. As you can see, there's only one location that enemies could spawn in, and there's two doors they could take to get to you. Most of the time, they like to go for the northern door, but very rarely they will go for the southern one, although it doesn't happen often. So I would say seafoam and mine the northern door, and maybe just simply place a mine on the southern door. Seafoam it if you have time and you hear enemies banging on it. As for your auto sentry, you could probably just place it at the northern door, either outside or inside. Probably inside would be better. That way it shoots and staggers enemies when they come in. As for the door itself though, this room is mostly covered in infectious fog, so you will either need to bring the fog turbine with you, or you'll need more fog repellers to throw them everywhere because a lot of the scans do go down below. And the same thing actually applies to zone 83 itself inside. The first room is mostly covered in infectious fog, so you'll need either again the fog turbine or more repellers, and this is why I prefer 81. Not only is the alarm door simpler and easier in my opinion, but 83 just has so much infectious fog and it's just a lot slower to traverse through. But either way, no matter which one you go to, 81 or 83, once you have your ninth GLP, you can leave. Go back to extraction, get on that circle. There is no alarm tied to it. The only enemies coming after you will be the, or the air alarm enemies, which is only three every 50 seconds. So really nothing too difficult. Get on the extraction scan, get it to 100%, and you are done with R5B2. And that's about all I've got for you guys today. As always, if you have any tips or tricks for this level that you want to share, any questions for me, or just have something in general that you want to say, leave it down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, then consider hitting that like button. It helps out the channel, and it helps these videos get noticed by people who really need them. And while you're down there, you might as well hit the subscribe button and ring that bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. I also have my own Discord server, so if you want to become part of this community I'm building or ask me any questions or just really want to chat with me in general, hop on in. Link is down in the description. Until next time, don't forget to... You know what? No, I'm done. I'm done. These spitters are driving me nuts. I'm done. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.